Hello everyone, thanks for choosing to watch this show. Yeah, I had a brilliant chat with the incredible Anthony Godfrey, former Liverpool Academy coach. So we're going to get into that in a moment. Just want to let you know, if you want to watch the show in full, head to redmenplus.com, sign up as a Captain Monthly subscriber, and if you use the code CLOP, you will get a month for free. And you'll get this show, plus all the other incredible content that we do day in, day out here at the Redmen TV. So yeah, we're going to speak about Curtis Jones and a little bit of Trent Alexander-Arnold as well. But honestly, the show in full was incredible. So it's about Jurgen Klopp and his impact at the academy, the academy in general, and just how well it is serving Liverpool's first team at the moment. Plus loan moves, just how good they are. Jay Spearing's influence, the coaches, it goes on and on and on. So yeah, I'll get you to it now. Hope you enjoy. And that takes us nicely onto a tweet you have tweeted out recently after the Arsenal game, because essentially it was a pitch with the academy. Great night for this place. Five mm -hmm. academy graduate players on the pitch today. Yeah. Obviously Trent, Curtis Jones, Joel Conser, Connor Bradley and Bobby Clark, which kind of was a little bit of the inspiration around this show why we mm -hmm. sat here because you're right ultimately I mean the emergence of Curtis Jones Joel Quanta absolute success story from this season Connor Bradley in recent mm -hmm. weeks has been incredible um, you've got Bobby Clark as you mentioned even the likes of you know Kay Gordon in different senses yeah. in the round it now Ben Doak as well has been in the round it prior to his unfortunate injury it ultimately, to sort of kick us off on this little section, now, it must just be absolutely bossy and these lads coming through and having an impact on the first team. Yeah, I, listen, I, I know obviously when, when these kind of nights happen, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge success for the academy and they need to take a lot of, obviously, a lot of satisfaction. And I'm sure that they do when they, when they see nights like the Arsenal game in particular, because we don't realise just how hard it is you know, and the challenge that, you know, the coaches and also the players that, you know, throughout their kind of youth careers to kind of get to that level. So it was a, a, an amazing night just to kind of see that, to see, you know, five of them in particular and, mm -hmm. you know, and three of them were actually from kind of, I think, three of them. Were, yeah, they were three of them were from the pre-academy yeah. days as well. So you got your Trent, your Jarrell mm -hmm. and Curtis yeah. that had been with the club, you know, since they were like seven, eight, nine or ten. So, and then obviously, you know, Bobby um, and uh, Connor, they've come in, obviously the last kind of couple of years, Connor slightly a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know an amazing night and hopefully that can continue that we can potentially see more because I think it means an awful lot to the su supporters as well no absolutely I think it's, I think it's quality I really do um, and on Trent especially let's start with him to begin with yeah. because you mentioned obviously been in the club um, mm -hmm. for many years now since he obviously got the vice captaincy start of this campaign I mean what he's capable of on a footy pitch is just quite frankly ridiculous but beyond that as well I mean just how much it means to obviously him to play for Liverpool and how much it means to the academy to see him doing what he's doing now <sighs> Trent at this moment in time for me is just in a league of his own, in a world of his own, uh, in terms of what he's obviously achieving this year. And, you know, and, uh, you know, one of my own stories, obviously, towards Trent was my very first session as a, as a 21 year old. So when I got invited into Liverpool Academy and it was on trial, believe it or not, as a coach, okay. same thing applies. <laughs> as a coach, you come in and, you know, they want to see what you're about. The, one of the first ever sessions uh, was to kind of just go in, drop in and just go and assist around the coaches that were doing the pre-academy at the time. And the, the pre-academy session was uh, a seven or eight year old Trent, uh, believe it or not, for the under eights. So to, to kind of obviously see obviously where Trent was then to where he is now, it's special. It means an awful lot. And although obviously I was never around, you know, you know, Trent teams or the age groups like that, you, you still obviously follow, yeah. you know, players' processes and then to see where it is now. You know, Trent, it was, uh, you know, and you know this through the coaches that he had at the academy, was an absolute sheer competitor. Hate losing, you know, sometimes, you know, he, his, his attitude towards losing might not have been the best, but the way he's applied himself over recent years and, and again, you know, the last couple of years, some of the uh, the press highly highlighting about obviously is defending and, mm. and whatnot. You know what Trent possesses in other areas of the game. I'll, I'll say this and I'll say this on Red Men TV. 
I haven't seen some of the things in world football that what Trent does with the ball. He's like a wizard. Uh, and that's obviously, you know, talking in the same breath as, you know, Steven Gerrard and the capabilities that he had with his, his ball striking abilities. So, you know, to see Trent there now as the vice captain, it's absolutely special. And I think obviously the vice captain has given that little bit of ownership and accountability as well to take his game to another level. So I'm absolutely delighted for Trent at this moment in time. And, you know, hope, hopefully he can kick on another level or two and see what that looks like. Well, he's not even his prime yet, is he? It's, 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 it's frightening, mate. It is. Yeah, you're right. His his innate ability to play footy and to strike a footy is something I've never seen before. It's just it's inhuman, basically. It's a joke. Um, Curtis Jones is another one I want to dig down a little bit more because yeah. you mentioned there a little bit of criticism around Trent. That comes from the defending, the England stuff a little bit as well, and sort of the national media. There seems to be some sort of um, a scapegoat element to Trent mm. and stuff like that. Everyone seems to pile on whenever he does anything even mm. remotely wrong from a defensive standpoint. But the Curtis Jones one's slightly different because that feels like it was a little bit more in-house sort of within the Liverpool fan base. People weren't having him for whatever reason, but his recent form, and I think Curtis Jones, ever since he got into the first team, really, obviously we've seen him like hit hit the uh, absolute height of a derby winner on his debut for Liverpool. But ultimately, he's another success story at the academy, local lad, proper scouser, you know, come through the ranks and stay yeah. dot, essentially. I mean, again, you must be incredibly proud to see what he's able to do. Trent, I think over the last kind of two months is is starting to fulfil his potential mm. to to the Liverpool supporters, based on obviously what we're seeing at the mo- at this moment in time is obviously a lot of the stuff that you know the coaches and people that have been watching Trent for many many years Good. know he's capable of. Yeah. So, you know, for me to see obviously what Kurt is doing is is ab- you know absolutely no surprise to me mm. at all in terms of obviously what he does with the ball. You know, his ball manipulation is pivoting from obviously, you know, one side to the other in terms of what he can do. And it was really interesting to see Klopp, you know, come out and I can't remember exactly what game it was now, but it was quite recently about obviously the speed to play. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can slow him, you know, a little bit down. But, uh, you know, Trent, sorry, not Trent Curtis, you know, in, it, with what he was producing at the academy, especially from like 14, 15. From 14, 15, he really, really kicked on. Mm. You know, he, I remember obviously the year with Barry Adam, I think, at the under 16s, really, really, and he started getting in the English, England youth teams. And then, you know, Barry was a big inspiration towards him. Then Steven Gerrard was a huge presence for him for those under 18s. So we knew obviously Curtis was, was definitely more than capable of being a figure around the first team. But in terms of the position that he plays, mm. you've got to obviously take into account, you know, he was playing an awful left, uh, an awful lot as the, you know the left side of the you know attacker, mm. obviously creating scary numbers for the under 18s. But you know the under 18s football, a lot of people obviously look at that and you see obviously players you know have real success within that. So they also think, well, you know, he was scoring all these goals, he was assisting all these goals. You know, a lot of supporters, a lot of fans think that will just happen naturally. Under 18s, the Premier League football, the golf and difference is absolutely massive. It takes time. He's an attacking player, you know, and I think what we're guilty of as Liverpool supporters is Robbie Fowler, Michael Owen, Steven Gerrard, and we just happen, we just sometimes naturally think, you know, they should be obviously hitting the ground running after mm. 10 games because obviously we've been used to them type of players yeah. in the past. It doesn't happen like that. It does take time. And I think they're in such a really good nurturing environment at the moment with the people around them, the support framework, the loans, that's some of the obviously happen as well. But with Curtis now, it's starting to click and touch wood. And I wish him the best of luck. There's no injuries that come into play now because he's getting that momentum and it's really important for him. 